Well, hello and welcome to our bonus content following up to our older condos webinar. My name is Robert Nordland. Uh, what we're finding is that program was very popular and we scheduled some extra time with our panelists to address all the questions that you asked. So today we're here with Kevin Davis. Kevin's president of Kevin Davis Insurance Services largest provider of specialty insurance coverage for community associations in the United States. Kevin's here to answer a number of the most common insurance questions you asked in that webinar. So Kevin, it's good to have you with yeah, us here today. Sure. Thanks a lot. Glad to be invited back. Um, I, I have also gotten a lot of questions about what type of insurance coverages we need, what happened, um, how can we make things better? dealing with deferred maintenance. And I think it's a great opportunity to kind of deal with some of these insurance issues. And I hope we get the chance to answer all those questions that we've been asked. Fascinating. Okay. Well, in that webinar about Champlain Towers South, you spoke about all these different insurance coverages, the different types of insurance coverages. And that's where I'd like to start talking about liability, excess insurance, DNO, HO6. Um, it's clear the audience was craving more of your time. So could you start with uh, some of that? Like what is DNO insurance and who needs it? Sure, out of all the coverages we're talking about here, the DNO is probably the most important. DNO is directors and officers liability insurance. This is a coverage you have when you are named in a lawsuit. When somebody wants to sue you because they you breach your fiduciary duty or you're acting appropriately or they're saying that you did something that you weren't entitled to doing. You didn't have the authority to do. So it is really, as board of directors, it's really important to make sure you have a director's and officer liability insurance policy. Okay. You talked about um, having the policy. What types of things does it actually cover? Um, sure. It's, it's not the fire and flood types of things, but it's more of those actions that you spoke about? A, exactly. What we, when you talk about a director's and officer's policy, you're talking about a wrongful act policy. Okay. We, general liability policy, you're talking about a property damage or bodily injury. Somebody slips and falls or a tree falls on something, but a DNO is a wrongful act. A wrongful act is any act or remission, which says any act, any act itself, or is held legally responsible for, or not legally responsible, that they're being sued or a claim is made against them because they didn't have the authority to tow my car away. They didn't have the authority to tell me I can't put signs out. They have authority to tell me I had to park a certain place. So who are that board members telling? Even though the documents outline exactly who they are, uh, where rules are, there are people who live in these associations that says, I never read the documents. I don't agree with the documents. I think the documents are unenforceable and unreasonable. And I'm going to challenge the board's authority to, uh, and, and the perfect example right now is COVID. Um, once the board of directors started closing pools and closing gyms, where did they get the authority to do that? And that was the question. And so we start seeing lawsuits, claims against the board of directors because they didn't have the authority by the government documents to say, you can't do these things. So what happens, your director of knowledge liability comes into play and responds to these types of claims. Okay, we are talking about the decisions they make. How does that affect the decisions they make or fail to make about maintaining the property. Talk about um, maintenance related decisions. And that's, and that's the important thing about what happened in, in Surfside, Florida, because there's one exclusion that's really, really critical in the director's and officer liability policy. And that is the property damage exclusion, the bodily injury exclusion. So if the board is sued because of some damage to the property, like what happened, the whole building went down, that's no longer a DNO. It's now a general liability policy, general liability claim, because general liability covers property damage. However, here's the issue, is that they had deferred maintenance problems for years and years and years. So if you sue the board and said, board, listen, you did not do, you didn't refund, you did not um, uh, manage the property well, okay? You didn't fund the reserve. So now we're going to sue the board of directors because they didn't do their job properly. Now That's you have that, a, that wrongful act that you were talking about. Exactly. Okay. There's a wrongful act which allows coverage to be um, may have and may not, but then they have that bodily injury part or property damage part in that comes into play, which the ex should be, which could be excluded from coverage. So if you go back to Champlain Towers, okay, the building came down, people were killed. 
what happens is those two things can automatically exclude coverage under the Director of Office Liability Policy. Because once you talk about bodily injury and property damage, all of a sudden now it is a general liability, general liability claim and not a DNO claim. Even though it is a wrongful act, the board did something wrong. They failed to maintain it properly any kind of way. Yeah, the, 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 there's a hard That's, line there, a specific exclusion. There, there's a hard line because, again, a DNO is a wrongful act policy. That means anytime they do anything wrong and they're sued as a result of that, the DNO policy should respond. So the key thing when we look at the DNO policy is what is not covered. Okay. Because right now, everything's a wrong flag. So no matter what they do, yeah. you can wrong flag by, by not building, you know, not funding reserves or allowing the building to be collapsed or not repairing the balcony, not repairing the pool. So when you start talking about certain items, we say, okay, here's the line. So if it's number one, if the building collapses or there's property damage there or somebody gets hurt, that's general liability itself. There's certain things that's uninsurable. So now all of a sudden, if you commit a grossly negligent act, something that is, is defies um, or a criminal act, okay? Um, if you got a board member punching another, uh, and, and, punching and the exactly. floor. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Certain things are not covered by DNO you know, coverage. However, you may still be defended until the judge says, yes, you did something wrong. Got it. Got it. So okay. It's not that we, you know, as insurer, we're not going to say you did something wrong and therefore it's excluded. OK, under certain exclusions, but we will be able to say, guess what? You'll be defendant and let the judge determine if you did something that was correct or incorrect. Got it. Or I like that. Not, OK, yes. you talked about uh, board members having DNO insurance. Do managers need DNO insurance? And should the management company be insured by the association's policy when they're doing work for the association? OK. Now, most management companies have their own E&O policy, errors and omissions policy, because they have a professional standard that they have. So they, they do things on a professional level, give advice you know, to, the, to the board of directors. They may set budgets. They may help out with reserves. So they have certain advice that they give. They need their E&O coverage. However, because they are agents of the board of directors and acting at their direction, some D&O policy will pick up coverage for that property manager. I would say, the one thing that if you're listening and you're on the board, find out if your policy you have for directors and officers cover the property manager, because if they are named in a lawsuit, the likelihood you have an agreement to reimburse them anyway, because most management companies have, you acted our direction, you reimburse us. So you should make sure that management company is covered under your directors and officer liability policy. It's really critical. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's uh, tremendous insights about all the um, DNO type of policy questions that we were hearing. Thanks a lot.